Hello friends, good week, how are you? Vladimir here, and this is the weekly review for 18th of November 2012. The last week was very uh, interesting, and again, especially the end of the week, with the yen pairs moves, uh, and the Pacific pairs move based on Australian. Well, the pairs we were looking for, like Aussie Canadian, for example, Aussie Kiwi, the pairs I have been talking about on my uh, previous reviews, they all did the move, and I turned to be very nice uh, profits. This week, also, uh, I expect it to be very interesting. There are several things um, on the list, um, majors, and then also crosses, some uh, exotic pairs, some commodities, and of course, indices and surprise stocks. So, uh, first of all, I would like to apologize if the sound is not uh, the quality we used to. This is just uh, I just recorded from another uh, computer, and I'm using here the building microphone. So I hope uh, you can understand what I talk and what I say. I I tested that, and well, it should it should be not bad. <laughs> Maybe not clear as with the microphone, but anyway, I hope you understand me, and I apologize uh, if it, for the inconvenience if it may cause it. The first pair I would like to talk about will be the dollar against the Japanese yen. Um, during the last three days, the pair is pushing hard up the last three days of the previous week. The question now is, is that the end? Well, it's pretty clear we have five waves here. It's one, two, three, four. Now we're on a current running five. Um, the thing is, if that's a correct uh, counting, or maybe all this was number one, and now we are in front of a huge uh, number three. It's like one, two, and a huge three. Well, uh, look, watching on the MACD on stochastic and RSI, there is definitely a room to go up. But I'll become, I would be very careful here. I'll explain why. First of all, we need to remember, based on weekly chart, there is much, much, much more where to go. Right? There's huge divergence, and it's only a question of time until it's going to be traded again somewhere here, uh, around 100 or higher. But the question is. Could that turn first of all to create new low before bomb up like a rocket? Watching on the weekly chart, we can see here that the weekly Bollinger Bands are being broken. That's a very bullish sign. It's also closed above the resistance. Every retrace down something like uh, 80, 70, 80, 30, that's the range, mm, we could accept that. Uh, should provide us a buy opportunity and that's where I think we should uh, be because based on monthly and weekly there is a lot of uh, bullish move to go but based on daily and four, based on daily and four hour chart mainly you can see that there might be a correction first of all this is the four hour chart okay? we can see that there is a weakness we sense that and that's why uh, I say it might first of all to correct a bit, like 80, 70 to 80, 30 range. Um, then around these areas, we should be watching for uh, potential buy opportunities from here to push higher. Higher till where? Where I would say that uh, 81, um, 80, 82 range should be the first target, while the final target should be above 83. Now, if uh, if I'm watching on the ATR channel, I can see we're already out of the daily ATR channel, which means the prices will try somewhere around here to retrace down, make any of the corrections I talked about, and then most likely push for another high, all the way to get out of the weekly channel. So. To make long uh, story short, I would say every retrace down for something like 50 to 100 points, just to make it, to give it the pair a real chance to work, should provide us a buy opportunity. And I would say uh, 
that this four hour chart trend line it's impossible to measure that very very um, on the pip that should be our last area we could accept for the correction to happen and that's much deeper than I talked about I said 80 30 that's much deeper than 50 points below uh, that's that's the final level where we could accept the pair to correct to because if it will be break below that and close below that that would be a very warning sign and we need to uh, be careful of that right so uh, that's that's my opinion for dollar yen every pull back down should be considered as a buy opportunity all right so this is the first pair uh, the next interesting pair I uh, have on the list of course it's related to the yen it would be the euro yen uh, which also acting very interesting creating here a very almost flat but hidden divergence the pair pushes up and that's pretty clearly what it wants to continue but that's a big resistance and more than that remember this trend line that's the retest the question now could that uh, ignore this trend line or not and that's why we got this stop during Friday so that's based on daily if it will close on above this trend line on daily chart then I will have no doubts we are going higher to 105, 10550 or uh, maybe even the 108 watching on the uh, ATR channel we can see that there is also place to go right? so again we are going for the 4 hour chart and every pull back down providing a bullish opportunities to buy Mm, should be good opportunities for a buy but uh, again remember that it's very important the, the situation on the uh, just one second here the situation of dollar is much clearer because here the trend line is much lower it's 200 points lower than the current price so uh, br breaking below that it's something like that is going like that breaking below this trend line uh, will give us a warning sign uh, so re all, all the retest of the line I, I was talking about playing around this same level with the bearish pressure should provide a correction down and every correction down should give us a buy opportunity because of the daily chart and if the channel or the trend line we just saw in the 4 hour chart was broken down that's the place where we need to be careful because that could um, turn the, the expected direction. Okay, and watching the weekly chart, we can see again that it looks like there is a room to go. Beautiful uh, equal tails candle pattern. RSI bounce from 50 pushing up. That could be the beginning of the move to 105, 108, or maybe 110 in the future. But first of all, it needs to break above the daily trend line I've just discussed about that's about the uh, euro yen well I could go for all the yen pairs uh, because all of them uh, seems like <laughs> doing the same I will choose uh, another one that the last one that would be the pound yen same story uh, every pullback should provide as a buy opportunity and for all of them I did not mention that yet but for all of them we need to pay attention for this divergence no idea if it will be created because no one knows how far this move will go up. It might go all the way up and MACD create new high without creating any diversion. So careful about that. But it might be also a double top. It's very, very, very clear fight here. I need to pay attention how it acts. Breaking above this high anyway should open the doors for uh, 131 or even 133 mm, to be created. Right, and again, if I if you watch uh, this one pound yen, also there is a room to go. Right? There is room to go. Uh, every pull back on the four-hour chart, for example, should be considered as a buy opportunity to take the pair high. Okay, that's about the yen pairs, and of course, uh, be aware if they all break the trend lines that they have, then it will be a warning sign. Next interesting thing on the list is the dollar Canadian. 
I've been talking about it already. We have a uh, on the previous, of course. Uh, we have here a beautiful daily continuing divergence, and from my point of view, it's only a question of time until the pair makes a down move. But it's very tricky. It's not a real top. It's not a real extreme up move. And this divergence line that we have on the RSI, a break above that, including the break above the resistance, could be the exact place where the dollar Canadian will flat up and take us maybe to 101.50, maybe even 102.50, or who knows, maybe even the previous high, which is around 104. Very careful here because very tricky. It's not an extreme level. It's not a very real strong up move. Uh, this current up move is just a correction for this situation. From here, all could happen. Right? Anyway, if it does start right now and goes below the 200 moving average again, uh, then I would expect the pair to go all the way down here. But, as I said, breaking above the resistance breaking the divergence uh, line that will be a sign to get out let it go and then we will find the best place to join to take the whole move down from the very top okay pay attention for the dollar canadian and be aware of every potential uh, break of this divergence line on the other side Another interesting pair I've been talking about for a while now is the Aussie Canadian. And I say it not once on the blog and on the weekly reviews that the edge of this cliff is coming. And here we go. We, it, it reached the level we were looking for between 104.50 to 105 plus. Uh, it did create a pattern and bam! During one day it reached the 20 MA, which is the uh, target of course for the pair. I still think it will push lower and I do think it's going to play around here for one, two, three days and then continue lower. Take it uh, down to 102, 60, 102, 70 range, something like that to the lower bend of the Bollinger and who, who knows, maybe even to the next important support, 101.90. I still think that there is a room for this pair to go down. How can we join? Go for the 4 hour chart. On the 4 hour chart you can see that there is a convergence. You can see that there is something that reminds... Let me just in one second try to uh, draw that. Okay, something that reminds the head and shoulders, potential head and shoulders. Every pull back up and the intraday uh, bearish divergence like on the 1 hour chart for example provide you the sell opportunity with the targets I've mentioned before. Remember our protection area is always daily trend line. Breaking above this trend line and the scenario might be changed and then we'll have to get out. A few words about the majors because I've been asked a lot about the majors during the last period and I really don't have any opinion about them. I hope that the euro dollar could push uh, lower and I hope it could break this uh, very strong support around the 127. I do want the euro dollar to be around 125 or even a bit lower in order to uh, look for buy opportunities. There is no continuing divergence on daily chart, there is nothing really important going on and well I prefer to stay out. Uh, for this pair as for now. I really don't have a clear opinion. Uh, it's been zigzagging for a while. From my point of view, it's 50 50 up or down. I hope it's going lower just to provide a beautiful lower buy opportunity. Maybe I'm wrong. That's why I do not want to deal with the euro dollar. And if you have any opinion, I will be, of course, happy to hear that. But Working on convergences and divergences in the combination, I don't see nothing, and that's why I think uh, I would stay out. Same with the pound dollar, uh, there is a very monster support on the 200 moving average, but the real support for the pound is here, right around this range, including the uh, sorry, 
I could erase this channel, I'm just a mistake. Uh, including these trend lines, somewhere around this level. And there's a range from here to here. Okay? Uh, let's try about. So, I do hope the pound dollar could push lower, take us to this level, maybe even to the very deepest one trend line, something like that. Okay, something like that, taking us to this range, and then it would become a perfect buy opportunity. That's why uh, I, I, I'm not convinced. I really don't not convinced yet, based on looking at the chart, and I don't think we have anything. There is no hidden divergence on weekly. There is just a stop on 20 MA. There is no clear divergence on daily. Definitely not after a clear move. So it's kind of 50 50 to me, and on such situation, I just stay out. Uh, if it makes the low I'm looking for, which is 157.50 uh, and lower, and lower, then maybe 156.50 even. Then I would be definitely watching for buy opportunities based on daily divergences. As long as it does not happen, uh, I think it would be better to stay out. Maybe that's not what you wanted to hear, friends, but uh, I really think we have better opportunities and. I know many many traders, uh, especially the new traders, try to stick to the majors, and I think it's wrong. Why? <laughs> why do you stick to the majors? Why? Why does it matter where to trade? Trade a pound New Zealandian or pound Singaporean or pound dollar? Why does it matter? The spread, okay, but you get much bigger moves, so you pay bigger, but you make profits at least, and the scenario is clearer cleaner so why why not to be where it's pretty clear and clean um, and not being on situation where it's not clean so think about it uh, seriously I've been asked a lot about during the last period and um, I understand where it comes from I understand that of course that, uh, on every basic school they all teach Trade the majors and that the euro dollar is the most tradable payer and the pound dollar, blah blah blah. But, okay. <laughs> you know what? On some place, the big guys, right? The sharks, they know that you trade the, the majors. And it's, that's why it's very easy for them to manipulate it as they want. I'm talking about the banks. Okay, so. When it's not clear, it's not clear. Don't fight it. When it is clear, you will know. So, really, I don't have any opinion here because watching on daily chart and four chart, it's very confusing, very uh, zigzagging during the last period. That's not the situations where I prefer to be. That's why I think we have better opportunities like dollar Canadian, like Aussie Canadian, like the yen pairs very, very soon after another push up, we will most likely get sell opportunities after. A shorter term push down will get a buy opportunity. I think that there are much more, much better opportunities to be in. So, now a few words about the dollar czar, as this is a trade I, I've been talking about a uh, long time as well. The pair reached daily double top. There's one, there's one problem right now with that. The pattern it creates right now is evening star. No, normally, evening star is not the most reliable. Um, pattern to trade the divergences. Many times after the investor style, uh, after the uh, evening star, sorry, uh, the market just pushed higher and then making the move. Now I do want to pay your attention for something interesting. I'm moving on the ATR channel, which is the average true range channel. The price is out of them on the daily chart, and the price is spiked during the week out of the uh, out of the channel. We can see that this up move is coming to the end because we get a clear bearish line here on three tops. It's only a question of time until it stops and making the huge retrace. Now, from time to time, the market is making something like that. It happened in 2001. It happened again in 2008. Yes, every time it retraces to the normal place. And you can see that this is the normal place. 
forty dollars are during the whole history. That's the normal case. All that is just an extreme situation, but then it all retraced. We need to be aware of that. Okay? Yes, it happened without divergence. It happened suddenly. Okay? But still need to be aware. That's why if you are going to trade investor the dollar czar, I suggest do that only and only and only with extremely negative leverage. What do I mean? For example, if you have 10k on your account, do not trade more than 0.02. Seriously. Because if it makes the bomb up, and of course, do not jump on every level. Don't sell here and 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 here. Don't get too exposed on this area. Because if it makes suddenly something like that, and that could happen because of the fiscal cliff coming. If there will be no solution, or may maybe even if there will be a solution, Maybe all that will not be enough and the US dollar is going to go crazy. It could happen. When it happens, we have no idea when, why and how. It happens so sudden and not expected. It all, all happens suddenly. And that's why I say be, be, be careful. Because if you trade uh, very ne negative leverage, you will not be scared even of such things. Oh yeah, so you will be in drawdown like 10% running. Alright, so so what? So I suggest, because in this situation we are on a weekly divergence long term and out of the weekly ATR and also on daily, trade the weekly chart. Okay, which means you can jump in because after all it's a double top and it could start a down move and I, I could expect it coming to 850 again I could expect it coming to 850 again, but if surprise happens, uh, uh, trade the weekly chart. Why? Because then you will wait only for weekly candle patterns without attacking the previous levels, and then you will be uh, less exposed and on much much smaller uh, risk. And that's the whole idea while trading a cycle and while trading the investor's style. Very risky pair, very risky situation because these kind of bobs, bombs happen on the past and they could happen again. And that's why we need to be very careful of that. Normally you can see after a long time of sideways, like we have now, it could happen suddenly. I don't say it would, but it could. And that's why if you trade, trade the weekly, aim the middle, which is around 850, I guess if it, if it will push a bit higher, it will turn to be 850 uh, as a target. Okay, And if it makes the crazy push up, then trade the weekly chart. And do not add by weekly levels, just wait for a weekly candle pattern, then you can enter and make a trade. Okay, so Pay attention for that. Very tricky scenario. I am bearish, but such surprises could happen, and no one knows. Whoever will tell you, I know when it's going to happen, don't believe me or her. It's impossible. Okay, it's not real. If it happens every time, it retraces to the normal price. This is no normally craziness. Okay, it all will be fixed. We need to know to avoid being too much exposed when it goes such crazy. And to join when the right time comes. Okay, and so I know it's I know it sounds very simple and theory. That's why I try to guide you what exactly to do. Okay, enter very negative leverage, at least one to five negative for 10k. Open 0.02, and you might wonder, so I I cannot profit too much on that. Okay, so what? But you still could profit good. But at least you will keep your risk much, much, much smaller. And that's the first thing you need to think about. Okay? It's up to you, of course. That's my opinion. That's what I'm going to do. And that's how I'm going to do this money. I just try to guide you how to do it correct. Uh, 
I think commodity is time. Before going for gold and silver, I, I would like to show interesting one, and I'm talking about uh, soybeans. If we pay attention for the soybeans, um, well, we enjoy this move, as you remember. If you remember, after 20 candles ride, we enjoy this up move. Uh, then I ask you to get out, and now, watching the weekly chart, on the weekly chart, we have kind of bend to bend, with small interruption, but still, one bend to bend. It looks like doesn't matter from this low or this low, there is potential beautiful uh, hidden divergence. The question is where it's going to stop, right? And there is a crazy powerful trend line here, so it could push all the way to down to this level. And it could happen pretty easy. If I uh, look after bearish divergence we have had, this is the support number one, this is support number two. That could be and should be support number three somewhere around here. Rest of the weekly chart, it still could push lower. Watching a daily chart, I can see that there is a divergence already. So what I would suggest that when you get your daily candle pattern, bullish candle pattern, and that could, could happen on this support, or it could happen on the next support or the lower one trend line, doesn't matter where. Whenever the uh, it starts a daily candle pattern being created, that's your buy opportunity. That's where you can jump in with a buy and again investor style. Investor style only. And only, which means very negative leverage. 20 MF daily chart could be the first target, of course, but the final target from my point of view could be set to this trend line, this double spike trend line. I think the low that will be created around this range will take us all the way back to the trend line. So a pretty nice move to expect to, and do not just attack, let it stop. We never know where it's going to stop. So let it stop first. Let it create a candle pattern and let then enter as an investor style. Okay? And then of course confirm every time by weekly. Every time you want to confirm, confirm by weekly support and weekly uh, band to band move and uh, potential stop levels. And of course remember the monster trend line that we have on the weekly. It could be uh, tested. If you want to play conservative, don't try to catch this small correction on the way. Try to catch the uh, trend line if and when it will be tested. Because then the opportunity for a buy could be even uh, stronger, could be a monster. Okay? Pay attention for that. And now a few words about the gold and the silver. Uh, they've been acting very, very, very quiet. And I, I think if surprises will not happen. Then after this stop, uh, the gold and the silver will make the break and continue higher. Uh, how to join? Well, I think the classical way of trading. Uh, wait for a break above the resistance, above the Bollinger Band, and RSI crossing the 50 again, gain the bullish momentum. Uh, that could be the okay to go. And again, as I said, if there will be no surprises because if gold and silver push slower, then stay out until we get the bullish divergence. No idea where and how it's going to happen. Only one thing clear, passions will uh, bring good things here. Same as the silver, which uh, has a clear sideway move and it's going to break. If it's breaking down, stay out. Until it creates a bullish divergence on the daily chart, then rejoin. If it breaks up, uh, breaks the resistance on the daily chart and RSI pushing above 50 again, gaining the bullish momentum, that will be the okay to go with a 35 as a first target and second target open because that could be the beginning of the next very strong bullish adventure. A few words about the indices. During Friday, they created Hummers, and I think it's correction time uh, with investor style and with all the conversation from the Congress during the weekend uh, about the fiscal cliff and the optimism they show. 
Uh, I think the indices could make the could start the push up uh, to the 20 MA. I would act extremely careful with the indices. Maybe even lower than one to five negative leverage, because watching on weekly chart, we can see it all so bearish. That no one knows how it could act. It could happen like it happened in 2007 and 8 suddenly break down and one week there is several percentages. So very 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 careful here uh, and I would say even that if this trend line and that's relevant for every uh, index okay, if the closest trend line that holds uh, the index is being broken Get up. When I say when I say broken, of course I mean at the end, at the end of the week, not the day before. If that happens, get up. They all have same uh, hammers, and it could be good sign. It could be terrible sign. I am not convinced at all that this is the end of the big down move, but I do think we will get some correction first of all. That's my opinion, and. Uh, as I said, um, I don't want to discuss a bit about the uh, the stock market. And you can just find it. I can see I don't have the uh, stocks on this. The stocks I wanted to talk about um, on this computer. Okay. Anyway, make sure to follow uh, my posts uh, during the week. Um, and if you have the chart, you will see that. Pay attention for Groupon on weekly chart and its monster divergence is building. Pay attention for Apple on a daily chart and its monster divergence is building. And I think this is great opportunities to start the attack uh, with investor style. Of course, for short, short term, enjoying the potential retrace up to the daily 20 MA or a bit, bit higher. I will upload the stock things later. I just don't have it on this platform. On this computer, and um, well, there are several things we we are running on the um, on the club, and like Euro Turkish, okay, I think it it could push lower. That uh, we've been trading in uh, based on the four-hour chart and the daily chart combination. It could push lower uh, for the Euro Turkish. Dollar Zar, of course, Dollar Mexican. We took profit already. We enjoyed the uh, the resistance and the daily divergence to enjoy uh, this down move. Um, another interesting thing is the natural gas. I just not talk about it yet because I'm not convinced where exactly will be the level. So I do want to see how the week act before I post about this one. Uh, it's definitely going to be interesting and so stay tuned anyway there are stocks and there are some commodities I'm going to share with you during the week on the blog so just stay tuned and again my highly recommended pairs are the yen pairs I think they will be very very tradable this week uh, of course those are Canadian dollar czar is very interesting as investor style of course soybeans which is going to be amazing during the next um, I would say one between one to three months. Uh, I think it's going to be amazing. And some stocks opportunities as I promise are going to upload. And the indices. And the indices. Just one last thing. Remember to act careful. Because we are talking on a period to the end of the year. And we all remember that fiscal cliff is coming. So take very, very, very small risk. Don't try to make some hero calls. And then st uh, stay with <laughs> uh, deep losses. You don't need it. Okay, don't ruin your well earned profits just by some uh, hero activities. That's all, friend. Thank you very much for watching this uh, video. And once again, sorry for the audio. Uh, if it uh, if it's not uh, as we used to, uh, just different uh, recording. Uh, source. I, I wish you a good uh, week and uh, good trading and I hope you can make profits with the, with the things and please uh, keep 
watching the blog, I will put the things there. So, thank you very much. Enjoy the week. Bye-bye.